Well, hello again and welcome to Walking in the Light, our weekly recap of the seven-day Adventist Adult Lesson Study Guide. This week we're studying lesson number six. It's entitled, Jesus, the Faithful High Priest. It promises to be another thought-provoking, stimulating study, so we invite you to invite your friend, grab your quarterlies, your Bibles, and study along with us. Please remember that you can obtain your own quarterly by going to the website absg.adventist.org. Click on the link and download your copy so that you can study at your own pace and even share a thought or two with a friend. We're still in the book of Hebrews, still looking at the message of the Hebrews. Tonight we consider why do we need a high priest? And what is the significance of having Jesus as our high priest? We're going to discuss that when we come back. So stay right there. We'll be right back. Well, thanks for staying with us on Walking in the Light. We always begin with a word of prayer on our memory verse. So, Elder Bell, would you bring us our memory verse for tonight? And Elder Thomas, you will lead us in prayer. Our memory verse is taken, lesson number six, is taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, and verse 26, from the New King James Version. It reads thus, for such a high priest was fitting for us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens. Let's pray. Father, once again, we give you praise. We give you thanks. We glorify your name because you're worthy. We thank you for this opportunity, O oh God, as we open your words. We pray that you might make your words plain to our hearts so that we might be encouraged knowing that we have a high priest in heaven who still ministers on our behalf and we can come boldly to your throne to receive mercy and grace to help in time of need. We want to thank you for the blessing of being able to call upon you anytime and as we open your words now we pray that you might open our hearts in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So again, we're studying lesson number six, Jesus, the faithful priest. Well, last week, Le Gordon, we looked at Jesus, the giver of rest. And uh, what did we learn about Jesus and true rest? True rest is actually found in Jesus, um, not in the Sabbath, but in Jesus Christ. All right. And how do we enter into that true rest that is in Jesus Christ, Elder Thomas? By faith. We by faith. enter by faith and we cling to that faith. And in that relationship with him, Elder Bell, we enjoy the blessings of rest now and rest, blessings of rest to come. That's right. The blessing that exists in Jesus is eternal. Absolutely. Well, this week we're going to explore just how Jesus makes it possible for us to have that rest in him. Very important. Just how God and Jesus makes it possible for us to have that rest in him. And so we're going to begin at first point. Gentlemen, we start with creation. When God created Adam and Eve, Elder Thomas, how would you have described that relationship that existed with Adam and Eve and God at creation? It was like a family, mm -hmm. father and um, son and daughter. So God was um, in total um, intimacy, had total intimacy with Adam and Eve. All right. So it was a harmonious, perfect relationship. That's right. God and man were one with the other. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Elder Gordon, we learn in the book of Genesis that sin came in. 
Ah, what impact did sin have on that relationship between us and God and even on our ability to relate to God? It caused a separation. Um, we were separated from God. Um, when God called Adam, what he usually do to come down in the cool of the day, Adam was hiding. So that, that relationship was separated. Absolutely. So sin caused a rupture, a separation in that relationship between us and God. Elobel, how did sin affect our ability to relate to God? Well, it affected our ability so much so man became so ashamed mm -hmm. to relate to God and went in hiding. Mm -hmm. But God has what we call a, a, um, a remedy prepared. Um, the event that this were to happen, God was prepared for it. Mm -hmm. And he did not catch God by surprise. Absolutely. So Elder Thomas, in addition to that, what did sin do to the human nature? How did it leave the human nature after sin mm. entered it? Human nature became weak in terms of the ability to do what God said. And, um, and so it deteriorated mm -hmm. even from that point where sin entered, man began to deteriorate up to this point. Absolutely. So that left us estranged from God, our nature corrupted or weakened. Yes. And our understanding of God, his mercy, his character became darkened. Yes. So that's not a pretty place to be. And again, the scripture tells us that the wages of sin is death. So mm -hmm. it leaves us with the part of destruction. But did God sit idly by and left us to our own demise, our own destruction? Or did he do something God? And if he did, well, what did he do in a nutshell? Well, because of the fact that God loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. Meaning that because we have sinned and come short, yeah. he came to fill the gap so that we can get back to where we were supposed to be. Absolutely. So God took the initiative to remove the barrier and restore the relationship between us and him by sending his only son yeah. so yes. that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so we want to see how Jesus accomplished that. What was the methodology, the apparatus through which God would accomplish this restoring of the relationship between him and the removal of the barrier between us and him. Because we know that a holy God cannot tolerate sin. Yes. And so we need someone who is going to bridge that. So let's go first to Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1. Let's begin there, Elder Gordon. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1. How is this son that God has sent to us to repair this relationship and to remove the barrier, going to accomplish this task of reconciliation. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, that he might offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin. All right, Elder Thomas, we have a phrase there in the very opening of the verse. What method or what concept that was mm. familiar with the Jewish people did we find, do we find in the opening uh, uh, phrases? Of yeah, that. we find the concept of a priest or mm. a high priest, um, someone who would mediate between God and man. Okay, so we find the, the concept of a high priest, of a priest, one mm -hmm. who mediates between God oh. and man. Yes. And Elder Bell, according to that verse, why is he mediating between God and man? What does he hope to accomplish? Fine. Um, in fact, he was chosen by God to provide um, a way for shameful, sinful human beings to reconnect with God. Okay. And so what, what that mediator did was he was, because he was chosen of God, he became God's spokesman mm -hmm. so that man would remove, come out of the shame. Mm -hmm. And if we looked at Hebrews chapter four, the last verse, he says, come now, come, let's go boldly to the throne of grace. So we're invited to come boldly because there is an intercessor or mediator who stands between God and, and, and humanity. All right. So 
according to the passage, God and read that verse again. Let's go back to the for, passage. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin. All right. So again, Elder Thomas, based on the passage that we've just read, what is the basic role of the priest? So this basic role is to um, connect with um, human beings with God in anything pertaining to God. Right. And it mentioned gifts and sacrifices. So would he go before God empty-handed? Not at all. Okay. He was always going with something um, to represent the, the, the sinfulness of men, um, inquiring or, or uh, asking for forgiveness okay. on man's behalf. So Gordon, what was the purpose of that priest offering those gifts and sacrifices? What was the outcome that he was hoping for? But he was um, hoping for that when he mediate between himself and God, that the people will cleanse from their sins. All right. So that the sacrifices and the gifts would remove the barrier and restore the right relationship with the people and God. Yes. Wow. Okay. Elder Bell, you talked about the high priest being appointed by God. Mm -hmm. Why did you stress that? Why was that important? Because man could not atone on his own behalf. Okay. Man could not decide who is going to be that mediator mm -hmm. because everybody has sinned. But God had the full authority to anoint, ordain, or select, elect, whichever word we choose, uh, any uh, one member. And in fact, he specifically said that he will choose from among a certain people. Okay. And so in that case, it was left to God to make that choice which will rightly represent God and man. Uh, Thomas, is there significance to you that it was God himself who initiated the, pre the concept of the high mm. priest and that he himself chose it? Yes. Um, if, if God did not do that, then man of himself could not have that uh, authority mm -hmm. to actually come before God or, or the opportunity to come before God in such a fashion, not even, not even for himself. Mm -hmm. And so to know that God was the one who chose um, to do that, it meant that God had a plan and God had a purpose um, in terms of restoring man back to his rightful place. Right. Also, if um, men choose the high priest, men will have favoritism. <laughs> I like that, Ella okay. Gordon. Very people practical. Would, yeah, people will choose who they want to choose. Yes. And so God in his wisdom have to choose because uh, the person that is chosen to be the high priest have to have certain kind of character. Absolutely. Mm. Let me ask you a question. So we see God appointing the high priest. This was not something that they took upon themselves. Is that the normal way that God operates within his kingdom, that he it is who decides who will be his workmen, his workwomen, and he it is who decides what role or function they will play? Is that the typical pattern that we find? Generally, God calls all men, just mm -hmm. like he called Adam when he sinned. Right. He called, by, and Adam there represented humanity. Right. He called humanity, where are you? I want to relate to you. Okay. Sometimes it's our own sinfulness that keeps us away from being chosen. Because God has called many. Mm -hmm. Many are called, but few are chosen. All so right. God calls many, mm -hmm. but the chosen ones are those who submit, willing to be submitted and sub be submissive to the invitation of Jesus Christ. All right, so let me press you a little further. Let me press the issue a little further. In the economy of God, mm. could I take it upon myself to announce that, hey, I feel like I want to be priest. I feel like I want to be pastor. Is that the way it goes in the economy of God? No, I mean, from scripture, we, we're seeing that God gives gifts and um, he gives ability. Mm -hmm. And then he calls people according to what he has given them mm -hmm. to render that in his service. So it's specific tasks that God would give each one of us. Yeah. And then he calls us to fulfill that particular. So uh, Elder Gordon, what happened to King Uzziah, who was king, but not priest? When he tried to perform the role of a priest, what did God do? God struck him with leprosy. Absolutely. Because, you know, if a man decided he wanted to be a priest and he's mm -hmm. wicked and evil, mm -hmm. how can he represent, you know, God mm -hmm. in a way that have to represent man? Okay. So God is the one who has to choose 
specific um, mm -hmm. um, qualification for certain kind of people. All right. And Elder Thomas, you remember when those boys challenged Aaron and the yes. people, Nadab, and what happened to Right, them? and, and oh, right. they were swallowed up. Cool. Yep. Um, the earth opened and swallowed them up. Right. Yeah. So what lesson do you think we can learn from that insofar as God's choosing and us respecting his chosen instrument to do his work? I think um, especially on the point of, of priest, um, that that position is is a very high position in the service of God. And and because it represent directly represent Christ, mm -hmm. God could not allow anybody to corrupt it. Mm -hmm. And like God is saying, you know, favoritism and so forth would come in. Mm -hmm. um, and so we see when God choose somebody to do a particular thing, mm -hmm. then nobody can just take it up on this, their own and say, I want to do it. Okay. All right. Yes, There's God. another example of God called Moses, mm -hmm. but Miriam thought that she was called also an Aaron. Right. Right. And God struck her with leprosy. Yeah. And so God has specific people that he called for specific roles. Yeah. Mm. And we are to respect that. Definitely. Yeah. And to work where God has placed us. Yeah. That's right. Work with That's all right. our minds right. as we support each other. And That's be content right. to know that God yeah. is the ultimate one. He has all knowledge. He does the place. Yes. And we'll be satisfied with that. Elder Bell, it says that every high priest is selected from among men. Why is it important that the priest, the high priest, is taken from among men, from his fellow brethren? What is the significance of that? What does that do for him as he ministers on behalf of the people? He must be able to relate. Uh, and that's something that is, is a requirement for mm -hmm. a high priest. Mm -hmm. He must be able to be to to sort out issues, mm -hmm. especially religious issues, among the ignorant, the people who are less fortunate, and people who are not quite up there. The, the regular man, the common man, needed someone to represent him. Mm -hmm. And so, is it the common man or every man? Well, every man. Yeah. But the common man normally is is side sidestep, okay. and something marginalized. Mm -hmm. And so the high priest must also be able to deal with that level okay. as well as with the higher level. Okay. And so he had to be a balanced person. Yeah. And remember, God knows the heart. Man looks at the outward appearance, but mm. God knows the heart. Right. So God selects from uh, not only that. God make a certain people, like Elder Thomas says, gifted, and from the gifted people he selects a person. All right. So he had to be human because he's recommending human so that he yes. could identify, relate to mm. them in their experiences, yes. their trials, yes. their aspirations, all that sort of thing. God knew you wanted to say yeah, something. He also has to be very merciful, understanding, because, you know, he, he knows about human weaknesses. Okay. Yeah. Right. Mm. So he has to be able to deal gently yes. with the people. Elder Thomas, how important is that, that we learn to deal gently with one another as it was with the priests because i mean take for instance eli and um you remember when hannah went up there yes i was praying i think he was frustrated with her because of how he was praying. he said are you junkin woman stop <laughs> stop that <laughs> so that yes, was not yes, necessarily yes, dealing yes, gently yes, was it yes. and, and it, yeah. he, it uh, again um and bell mentioned early man look at the outward appearance yeah. god looks at the heart mm -hmm. and we saw that that eli there was really looking at the outward appearance right. he did not know the heart so the the weakness of man and mm -hmm. that tendency to to judge incorrectly sometimes mm -hmm. uh we saw it came out from time to time but it, it was very important for for somebody in that particular office to always remember that they're only representing God they are not God yeah. they're representing God and the, uh, the, the way that God operates is in mercy and compassion do you know what I find strange and I don't know if this has been your experience but here the priest because he is weak sinful mm -hmm. just like a fellow brother should be able to sympathize or to deal gently, hold that yeah, emotion yeah. or the constraint by the fact that he too is weak and deal gently in it. In other words, I understand, I too am subject to weakness, therefore I deal compassionately with you. But quite often in the body of Christ, we find that after we would have received so much grace, it is so difficult for us to treat gracefully with people. Mm. How do we grow up in this area so that mm. we are more priestly 
as God has made us priests in Christ. And I think Jesus gave an example mm. of, of the man who, in a parable, who, who was um, forgiven so much debt. And then he went out and saw fellow um, brethren who owed him a small amount and, and how he behaved. Mm. I think sometimes we, 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 are, we become proud mm -hmm. and think that we, we are great because we are forgiven, because we have a gift. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, God mm -hmm. is blessing us or, or God is using us. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is using us this way or that way. And we become proud. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's the, 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 the point in, in Lucifer's fall that he became that proud. Mm -hmm. And so because of this, because of this nature of sin, we tend to become lifted up right. um, when we're in certain position and then we begin to treat others as if they are lower than us. Right. Okay. Elabel, help me. How do I learn to be as gracious with others as much as God has been gracious to me in forgiving my trespasses, my sins, my faults, hmm. so that when I have to deal with an erring brother or an erring sister, that I deal gently or I treat compassionately with them. Help me. Well, I, I think I could help, try to help you with what we are studying this mm -hmm. evening. From time to time, the high priest, because he was chosen from among men, mm -hmm. had to make atonement for his own sins. Absolutely. And so God in his mercy reminds you consistently that you are not perfect. Mm -hmm. And so you too must be prepared to accept, acknowledge your sins. Yeah. How do I help you now from one to one? I would want to suggest that you re-examine day after day your experience, review the day that was, mm -hmm. and see where you could have been better mm -hmm. and ask God for the grace to improve your stuff. And I would, I mean, last week we looked at it, support one another. Mm -hmm. I think this is something that is greatly needed among Christian believers, where we call on each other, support each other, and pray for one another. All right. Okay. So, so let's, some, uh, yeah. some people say, well, you know, that's my personality. That's the way I speak. I mean, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, that's who I am. But you have to take on the nature. As, as, as a matter of fact, if you're a Christian, you have to take on the nature of Christ and change. You cannot be like that all the time. You have to change. And that's mm. one of the reasons why we're going to find that Jesus is our perfect high priest because he is the one who gives us mercy mm -hmm. and who gives us grace yep. to right. help in the time of need. Yeah. So understanding how Jesus, our high priest, fits into the picture and hold to that will also give us the power, the ammunition we need to be more yeah. gracious. So yeah. let's back up a little bit. Sin divided us, caused mm. a separation. It corrupted our nature and it distorted our understanding of God. Mm. God takes the initiative and God says, I'm going to do something to repair that. I'm going to send my son and I'm going to send him to fulfill this role of High priest. Yes. It is only this high priest who will be the bridge, who will be the connection mm -hmm. that will be able to re bring God down to men and bring men up to God. So in this high priest, mm -hmm. God and men will be reconnected and the yes. barrier would be removed. We started and we've looked at some characteristic of the priest based on the earthly system. We saw that he had to be taken from among men, mm -hmm. from his fellow brethren. He was appointed by God. Mm -hmm. right? He was he's supposed to be merciful. That's and right. Then his basic role was to offer gifts and sacrifices on behalf of his people. All right. So, Gordon, if we'll just read down to verse uh, four, just to cement what we were saying. So let's go from verse two to four again. Who can have compassion on the ignorant mm -hmm. and on them that are out of the way? For that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. And by reason hereof he ought, as for the people, so also for himself to offer for sins. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. Absolutely. All right. So now we see that... There was a system yes. in Israel, a literal system, yes. where there was a priest, earthly priest, high priest. Mm -hmm. There were animals and stuff being slaughtered. Yes. There was a sinful priest who had 
who was surrounded with a weak human nature and himself had sinned, yes. who had to offer sacrifices. Right. But we're saying now that Jesus is the perfect high priest. Now, let's see in what ways mm. Jesus was made a priest. Let's go on first to verse number five. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. All right, so let's stop there, Gordon. According to that verse, Elder Thomas, what is the writer saying about Christ's appointment to the office of a high priest? Did he take it upon himself? <laughs> Right, so the author is saying he did not take it upon himself, mm -hmm. just like the earthly priest would not take that, ja that mm -hmm. um, job upon themselves. Mm -hmm. God was the one who called him and gave him that appointment. All right, and to prove that, what did he do, Elder Bell? What, to prove that God did not take it upon himself, what did the writer use to prove that point? Well, he actually used one of a recorded in the, uh, the baptism of Jesus, this is my beloved son, mm -hmm. and he says, you know, I've begotten him. Thou art my son. Today, I have begotten you. Mm -hmm. And God himself installed Jesus mm -hmm. in, on his right hand to be the high priest. Okay. So here we see that God not only called, I mean, in, in, inaugurated him, but he also publicly declared that he's a high priest okay. or intercessor. Right. So, Gordon, let's go back to that verse again, because we want to be very clear who it is here, whom mm. the Father is appointing high priest. So, let's read it very slowly again. So, so also Christ glorified not himself uh -huh. to be made an high priest. Right. But he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. Okay, so you remember we started out by studying that Jesus is the Son of God, in yes. whom he has spoken in That's these right. last days, yes. who is the express image of his brightness mm. and the exact representation, who himself is God. This God became human, right? Yeah. Took yeah. on human stuff. That's the Son. All right, God, let's go to the next verse to see now. So that's the kingship there, Elder Thomas, that's the yes. kingship of God being established there when we All go right. back to yes. one man. <laughs> now let's go to the next verse, Elder God. As he said also in another place, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Okay, so mm -hmm. again, the writer brings in another quotation, which is an oath where God is making an yes. oath, swearing an oath, that's right. that this son is also will be a priest after the order of mm. Melchizedek. Elder Thomas? Yes, yes. So he's an ordained, and, and that's clear. Um, Paul is making the point that God was the one who chose him, uh -huh. and God was the one who also ordained him, anointed him to be in that position. Absolutely. Elder you know what God? I see in this verse also is that here God called human, mm -hmm. um, you know, high priest. He made an high call, someone to be a high priest. And then he sent Jesus Christ to identify with us. Mm -hmm. And he also called him to be a high priest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, Elder Bell, we're not going to explore it, but there's a distinction that is worth noting. Yeah. Notice that he's made a high priest mm -hmm. after the order of Melchizedek. Yes. Not according to the order of, of Levites, Levites or right. the Levitical That's priest. Right. So, mm -hmm. But he's a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. So there we see that he fits in with number. He was appointed. He didn't take it yes. upon himself. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, he has to be taken from among. He has to be mm -hmm. identified with us. So we studied in chapter 2. Let's go back to chapter 2, verses 14 to 17. Chapter 2, verses 14 to 17. And let's see what is said there of Jesus in terms of him identifying with us who are flesh and blood. What does he say? For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, mm -hmm. he also himself likewise took part of the same, mm -hmm. that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. 
so he became like us, like right? He like took part in what we have. So go Which right ahead like to verse 17, Gordon. And they delivered them who to fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Mm -hmm. for, ever, for verily he took not on him the nature of angels, mm -hmm. but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wherefore in all things he behoved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in mm. things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Absolutely. So, Elder Thomas, why did he assume our human flesh and blood nature according to this? So that he could identify with us. Mm -hmm. He could be like us. Yeah. And so he could be a merciful and faithful high priest. Absolutely. And so fitted, perfectly fitted to represent yes. us as our high yes. priest since he himself so identified and yes. relates with us. Now let's go back to chapter 5, Elder Gordon, and let's see again how the writer makes this critical point. Let's read it from verse 7. Or Elder Thomas, you have that? Verse 7 to 9. Yes, it says, oh, ten. Go right there. Mm -hmm. who in the days of his flesh, mm -hmm. when he had offered up praise and supplication with strong crying and tears mm -hmm. unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered mm -hmm. and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obeyed him. Wow. So, Elder Bell, yes. it seems to me that here is a man who shares our experiences right. to the hilt. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, so we're seeing that he identifies with us, just yes. as the high priest. We're mm -hmm. seeing that he was appointed of God, although he was a higher oath and after the order of Melchizedek. Yes. We're seeing that he suffered, just like us, identify with us. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4 verses 14 to 16, and let's see if he's able to be compassionate with mm. us. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, mm. for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but as well in all point, tempted like <laughs> as we are, yet Amen. without sin. Amen. 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 So, Elder Bell, yes. he... Does this mean that he's able to be compassionate? He qualifies. He Absolutely. is qualified. That, qualified. That qualifies him. Absolutely. That's one mm. of the characteristics of, of, of high priest. Absolutely. But let's look at a couple of ways now. Yes. He's different to the earthly high priest. That verse, just read the last verse again. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. All right. Let's go back to verse 15, Elder God. 15. For we have not an high priest which mm -hmm. cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but as well in all points, tempted like as we are, yet without sin. All right. So, Elder Thomas, what is a distinct difference between Christ and the other earthly priests according to this verse? He was without sin. He was without sin. Though what tempted. Does that mean? Yeah. He Though did tempted. not sin. He did not sin. He did, he not, did sin. not succumb to any of the temptations. Mm. So he did not sin, he did not succumb, so he did not have that weakness. He did not have that weakness. Did he, was he sinful by nature? No. Absolutely. No. Oh, and the thing is, mm -hmm. he didn't have to make atonement for himself. Yeah, and he was, didn't yeah. have to make atonement yeah, for, for himself, himself because he never sinned. He, he never sinned. Mm. So, yes. So we could come boldly to him. So he took on sin. Yes. And he resisted sin right to the ultimate point of resistance. Yes. That's right. Yet he never sinned. But because right. he resisted sin to that ultimate point of mm. resistance, he's able to identify with us when right. we're going through that. God, you we're going to make a point. Yeah, I mean, here we have Jesus Christ who came and identified with us, mm -hmm. meaning that he was the only one who could be a high priest forever. Mm -hmm. And so he took on flesh, came and lived a sinless life. So that's why he is the ultimate high priest. Mm. Absolutely. Because he's suffering, yeah? His suffering equipped him to be the ultimate high yes, priest. His yes, sinless yes. life equipped him to be his yes. ultimate high priest. And then we're going to see then that um, he's all after the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek. Yeah. He's high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Let's read uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 7, verses 1 to 3. Hebrews chapter 7, 
verses 1 to 3. For this Melchizedek, the king of Salem, priest mm. of the Most High God, mm -hmm. who met Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him, mm -hmm. to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Okay. All right. Verse 3? Yeah. Verse without three. father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abided a priest continually. All right. So here comes a priest, Melchizedek. Yes. Elder Thomas, is he a man? Yes, he's a man. Mm -hmm. He's a real human being. He's a real human being. But he has a twin position. <laughs> yes. He's king. Yes. And he's also priest. Right. Okay. What's significant about what he did or what Abraham did to him in this passage of the God? Oh, he, he was higher than Abraham because mm -hmm. he paid tight to Abraham. Mm -hmm. So he was a king priest of Salem. Mm -hmm. So his priesthood existed before, before Abraham. Before Abraham. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And Abraham and, paid tight to him. Right. And it existed before mm -hmm. um, the the it, the order was given to right. to the Levites. Mm. So this 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 order is great. But Elbel it says of this king uh, Melchizedek. He had neither what? Father, mother. Father nor mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life. Like the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. Mm -hmm. So there are two things here. One, he remains a priest forever. Mm -hmm. Now, without father or mother, how are we to understand that? I, I thought only God was without well, father or mother. <laughs> He, he well, um, yeah. Paul emphasized that there was no trace of his genealogy, mm. as opposed to there is no genealogy. Oh, okay. Uh, let's, let's, let's read this thing. There's yeah. no trace. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that there isn't. Okay. Mm. Uh, secondly, is forever means until he's no more. Okay. Not forever without end. Okay. And so we have to appreciate that. And the other thing is, he did not come out of the line lineage of the Levitical priesthood. Mm. Okay. And, and so... It shows me mm -hmm. that God in his authority can also select mm -hmm. a, a priestly uh, um, order mm -hmm. outside of Levitical because he's God. Okay. And, and this is to be understood. So, so while God has given to humanity the Levitical line through Aaron, through Levitic, um, the, um, the, the, um, the priesthood of Aaron, the Levitical priesthood, mm -hmm. he has also the right to see like a higher priest from outside of that order. Okay. Because he's gone. Right. Mm. And he does not change the law of the priest, Levitical priesthood that remains. What he does institute at, at a different level of priesthood. All right. I'm going to come back to you because somewhere in this passage, it says there is of necessity a change of the law. <laughs> so before you go to the world camp, Melchizedek, was chosen by God. So mm -hmm. he was a high priest chosen by God. That's and right. after that, priest then... of the Most High God. Of the yes, Most High God. Right. 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 So he was chosen by God. Mm -hmm. The Levitical priesthood came after mm -hmm. Melchizedek. That's right. And that was also, also chosen by God. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. I just want to make that point. Okay. So Christ, mm. then Melchizedek then becomes a type or a symbol. Yes. 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 Right of, yes. of of Christ, he was not Christ. He was not God. He was no. not a being from him. Was right. a man, but right. whose ministry and and, and stuff resembles mm. in some way that of yes. Christ. Okay, very important to understand that. All right. Now, Elder Thomas, we want to press along because it talks then about uh, an effective priest an effective priest, all right? It says then, let's read, uh, Elder Gordon, let's go back to chapters. Let's go back to chapter uh, seven. Mm -hmm. and let's read verses, uh, okay, let me get my beer in here. Let's read, let's read uh, verses 11 to 16, that's right, 11 to 16. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek mm -hmm. and not be called after the order of Aaron? Mm -hmm. 
for the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change mm -hmm. also of the law. Uh -huh. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, of which no man gave a, a attendance at the altar. Mm -hmm. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Mm -hmm. And it is yet far more evident, for that after the solemnitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest, who is made not after the law of carnal commandment, but after the power of the endless life. Wow. Okay. So let's let's unpack this a little bit yes. now. Okay. We're talking about an effective priest. In other words, the first statement that we find there in verse 11 is that the priesthood then did not make the people perfect, right? Mm. That's right. What does that mean, Elder Thomas? It, it could not really um, cleanse, as it were, the, the people from their sin. Mm -hmm. it, it was a shadow, it was a type, mm -hmm. and even the, the sacrifices themselves were, were not able to do the cleanse the conscience, as mm -hmm. it were, um, from sin. And so that meant that they were doing a job that prefigured, as it were, Christ's job. Right. Absolutely. And it's reasoning very logically, right? If yes. something works, we say today, why change it, right? right. If it works, right. Right. just keep work. But the obviously the shadow, as you said, didn't work. So again, there is uh, the need mm. for a new priesthood in the order of Melchizedek, not in the order of Aaron. That's right. For when there is a change of the priesthood, so here the writer is saying that there's a change in the priesthood. There's mm. now a priest, priest. Mm -hmm. after the order of Melchizedek, yes. mm -hmm. which is Christ, yes. who is from a different tribe, not mm -hmm. from the tribe exactly. of Levi, which mm. is the tribe of Judah, That's right. and who is made a high priest, not on the basis of a commandment right. that says this must come from Through the this tribe line. of yes. Levi, yes. Mm -hmm. but on the basis of the power mm. of an endless life. That's right. And the bell? Agree. So you were going with the change there now. Yeah, no, fine. So fine. So next, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Go right, go right ahead. And so what we see here is accommodation of, of, of priesthood. Mm. Here we have the human Levit Levitical priesthood mm -hmm. has a law unto itself. Right. Then we have Melchizedek. Right. So who, the law, let's be clear. Yeah. Let's deal with it. So the law for the Aaronic or the Levitical priesthood, you must be a male. Exactly. You must come from the tribe mm. of Levi. Levi. Yeah. Agree. And if you die, someone, someone from, from the tribe, tribe of Levi That's right. carry you. Yeah. And as a Levi, you are a sinner. That's right. So you have to offer sacrifices for your sin and for the people. Excellent. Okay. Let's progress. Carry on now. Yes. Then right. we have Melchizedek, mm -hmm. which is suggesting what we call bridging that, mm -hmm. making, introducing at outside of the Levi, tribe of Levi, mm -hmm. God authorizes a, a priesthood mm -hmm. that has, as it were, no end mm -hmm. in that when he's chosen, mm -hmm. he has nothing to pass on to anybody mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's not a lineage, it's mm -hmm. an individual priesthood. Mm -hmm. And there must be some accommodation of law mm -hmm. to, to, to initiate him, mm -hmm. for the better want of a better word. Okay. But he is still not perfect. Mm -hmm. But he receives gifts and return gifts in return and blessing. Melchizedek. Then we have now introducing beyond that a priest that does not require any anything. He's the ordained of God, right. and there, it must be another law to govern this priesthood right. that sits on the right hand of God okay. and lasts forever and ever okay. unto eternity. Right. And so we have three levels of of administration, mm -hmm. for the want of a better word. Let's move the word law and make it administration. We have what, what you want to move what the boy is. <laughs> well, let's, let's synonymous. Let's make a word synonymous to, to, to law. Administration. God has administration in Levi. He has administration yeah. in Melchizedek. Yeah. And uh -huh. now he has administrative expressions, right. aquatic six, in Christ the high priest. All right. So, Elder Bell, quite clear. I'm following you quite clear. But I, I think, the, yes, the Bible. So there is a change. Yeah. In that law, it's not uh -huh. that it's no longer Levi's now, mm -hmm. yeah. but somebody from Judah. Mm -hmm. And there's also a change mm -hmm. in the sacrifices being offered yeah, because right, it's yes. no longer animals, animals and that's stuff. Right, that's but right. it's now 
<laughs> human he's being. His own self. And it's now Christ, yeah. right? Yeah. Sinless human. Sinless human, which would be Christ. Yes. Now being offered yeah. as the, yeah. But you know, um, uh, the forgiveness of sins through the Levitical priesthood would yeah. have to come by bulls and goats. Yeah. They were not perfect, not even the high priest. So we have to have another high priest that would have been perfect mm -hmm. to represent us. Yeah. And indestructible high priest. Yeah. And there's where Jesus came through the lineage of Judah mm -hmm. so that he can represent us. An indestructible high priest that will live forever and ever. Okay. All right. Let me <laughs> pour something in here to tease you gentlemen. Because in Jewish thinking, right? Bulls and goats, bloods of bulls and goats, mm -hmm. could never atone Goat for, sins. for deliberate sins. That's right. And uh -huh. we see that mm -hmm. coming out there later on. Bloods of bulls and goats. They thought that these only cover the unintentional sins. Mm. But the deliberate, willful sin against God uh -huh. that says, I want no part with you, I'm done. They, in their thinking, there's Only no debt. There's mm. no penalty for this. Listen to Numbers here. It says in Numbers chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 22. It says, if you sin unintentionally and do not observe all these commandments that the Lord has spoken to Moses. Notice the word unintentionally. All that the Lord has commanded you by the authority of Moses from the day that the Lord commanded Moses and continuing through your future. Then if anything is done unintentionally without the knowledge of the community, the whole community must prepare one young bull for a burnt offering, for a pleasing aroma to the Lord, along with his grain offering and his customary drink offering, and one male goat for purification offering. And the priest is to make atonement for the whole community. This is if they sin unintentionally. And they mm. will be forgiven. The relationship will be restored, right? Mm. The barrier will be removed because it was unintentional. And they have brought their offering, an offering made by the fire to the Lord and their purification offering before the Lord for their unintentional offense. And the whole community of the Israelite and the resident foreigner who lives among them will be forgiven since all the people were involved in the unintentional offense. Now, verse 27, if any person sins unintentionally, this is the personal one now, then he must bring a yearling female goat for a purification offering, and the priest must make atonement for the person who sins unintentionally. When he sins unintentionally before the Lord to make atonement for him, and he will be forgiven. You must have one law for the person who sins unintentionally, both for the native born among the Israelites and for the resident foreigner who lives among them. But the person who acts defiantly or sins intentionally, where the native born or resident foreigner insults the Lord, that person must be cut off from among his people because he has despised the word of the Lord and has broken his commandment. That person must be completely cut off. His iniquity will be on him. Mm. Mm. Very interesting yes. what the, the, the bloods of bulls and goats were being exactly. used for. <laughs> but in the thinking now, uh -huh. that person deserves only death. But look at what is going to happen now. Our high priest is going to do. Yes. No wonder he's truly the priest, the real priest, because it's <laughs> only his death that really pays yes, the penalty for yes, us. Yes, yes, yes. And cleanse our conscience from dead works. The ultimate price. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's absolutely beautiful. And it just as the high priest ministry um, elevates, mm -hmm. so the covenant Re, um, re, revelation elevates mm -hmm. and Christ says he comes to the point that the covenant is not done away with but now I will write a new covenant it's not really a new covenant but I'll write it in their hearts mm -hmm. I'll express it or mm -hmm. reveal it individually to their hearts mm -hmm. and so it is the high priestly ministry becomes more personal it's not just an, a, a service a, a yearly monthly weekly daily no. it becomes a continuous high priestly service. Okay. So we don't have to wait on the high priest to stand up. Right. All right. For time's sake, let's press here, Gordon. Let's look at 
uh, Hebrews 7, verse 16. Hebrews 7, verse 16. So we see that the order has changed now. It's, it's, it's now Christ, the high priest, after the order of Melchizedek, but on the basis of what did Jesus become high priest? That's the question. Verse Who is made six. not after the law of carnal commandment, yeah. but exactly. after the power of an endless life. Amen. After the power oh, of an indestructible endless. life or endless life, most of the virgins will say. Elder Thomas, this simply means that he will never die. He exactly. continues a priest yes. forever. What yes. is the significance of that? I mean, there were perhaps hundreds of thousands yes. of priests yes. who would have died yes. in their service to God on behalf of the sinner. So what is the significance now that this priest who is made high priest by God yeah, after an question. oath, an oath that God swore with him, yes. this person who lives forever, what is the significance of that for you and me? That there is the, with hope that is always available for anyone mm -hmm. through any generation. Mm -hmm. That's right. And it doesn't change in any form yeah. or fashion mm -hmm. um, because the high priest himself is not changing. Mm. So that remains. Ah. Um, I, 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 I see something else coming out here okay. in that Paul was encouraging people who were going through um, struggles, right. persecution. Mm -hmm. and, and in the system then, we mm -hmm. recognize that even those of the priesthood then mm -hmm. were against mm -hmm. the way, mm -hmm. were against Christ. Mm -hmm. And so one who is, I mean, from ever since, various religious systems had somebody to minister as a priest. Okay. And so these new believers must be encouraged by knowing that they're still a priest. Uh, amen. Amen. <laughs> a high priest who lives for an, an eternal one. An eternal one. So, exactly. Yes, yes. And Ezekiel says that the very priests have violated the, the laws of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so... We, That's why the, they the, died too. The, right? the priesthood could not be trusted any... I mean, fully... The Levitical priesthood could not yes, be trusted. Yes, yes, and yes, so yes. The, the trust in finding an honest character mm -hmm. in among the Levites mm -hmm. was becoming far and far between. All right. And so here is one, Paul is saying, who does not require any change. And he, he has no beginning, no end. And he's forever. And I like what it says. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And forever. And th there's no need for you to look for another one. Because mm -hmm. you can't better that. Okay. Uh, also, it, it, it says that um, all the priesthood would have died. Melchizedek yeah. died. Mm -hmm. All the lineage uh, of the Levitical priesthood would yeah, have died. Absolutely. So who was there to represent us? Absolutely. Only this high priest that God has appointed, Jesus Christ. So it makes no difference that I have made a pledge on an oath to Elder Thomas. That's right. He being your priest, if he's dead. That's mm. right. But the Oath is binding forever and always yes. guaranteed to the one who is living, and that is Jesus as In high destructible high priest. Oh, that's, that's right. Elder Gordon, let's read verse 22. And let's see now how is Jesus characterized here as to this new covenant that this is initiated. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. All right. Mm. Is a surety. That's Elder right. Thomas, a surety, a guarantor. A yes, who yes, is that? yes, yes. That's a person who would um, have to take on whatever responsibility or penalty is to be paid for yes. someone else yes. who got in trouble. Uh -huh. And so if that person who got in trouble um, is not able to pay yeah. or, or, or they escape judgment from the law, whatever, then this person is a surety would have to take on that charge. Absolutely. Even though if yeah. the person died. Yeah. And yeah. this is yeah. where Elder Bell was eager to get to. Let's read to that seven, <laughs> chapter 7, verse 26. So as this guarantor, this surety yeah. of this better covenant, Jesus is that. This better covenant that we have built on better promises, exactly. built on better sacrifice, built on yes. a better guarantor, built on eternal priesthood. Let's read that, what he says here. For a certain high priest became us, mm -hmm. who is holy, Harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. Absolutely. Mm. What is the writer trying to do here, Elder Thomas, by describing our high priest as holy, sinless, separated from sinner, and higher than the heavens? He's giving, he's building the confidence in the people that there is no need to worry or mm -hmm. to fear. Mm -hmm. 
about what is going to happen yeah. in terms of salvation. Mm -hmm. It is already guaranteed ah. because our high priest is there who lives forever. So, can I just add a piece? Bell, yes, quickly there. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. At that time, the, the Jewish people were having difficulties. They couldn't meet the demands of sacrifice. Mm. Not even turtle dove. Mm. They may not be able to afford it. And so Paul is saying, no longer do we have to worry not having that mm. to come. Come as you are. Holy. Just as you are. Mm. And, and, and I mean, this, uh, the provision is made to yeah. cleanse you with a priest that who can't change mm. and, and who can make any and every atonement for sin. All right. So what do we do today with this great doctrine of Jesus as the high priest who perfectly represents us before God because of his spotless, perfect life, the fact that he has suffered and identified with us, the fact that he is the high priest forever, that God has made this covenant with him. Yes. How should this impact us? Elder, Elder Gordon, you know this what he says in chapter 5, verse 11 to 14. To, let's read that. In chapter 5? Yes, verse 11 to 14. This is one. one. Hebrews 5? Yeah. Chapter 11 to 14. So, yeah, chapter 5, verses 11 to 14. Of whom we have many things to say. Yes. And hard to be uttered, yes. seeing ye are dull of hearing. Mm. For when, for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye mm. have need to that one teach you again, mm -hmm. which be the first principles of the oracles of God, mm -hmm. and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Mm -hmm. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full of age, mm -hmm. even those who are reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Mm -hmm. So you see what he's doing with this teaching, Elder yes. Thomas? He's challenged them to advance in the understanding yes. Yes. of Christ's high priestly ministry, you know, by seeing his resemblance as their high yes. priest to Melchizedek. In other words, we are not just to read these truths and take yes, them, yes, just yes. feel good about them. They are to really give us strength to face those troubles mm. that come our way. That's right. Yes. To yes, cause yes. us not to throw in the towel, but rather to walk strong in faith, mm. even as Abraham did. And this is the yes. challenge. It's also challenging us in view of that, that our salvation is secure. Mm. Secure. We can have strong confidence in that. Don't yes. worry about yes. it. Jesus is there for us. And so we must carry on. And so in the final analysis, we can't be taking these things just theoretically. Yes. They must mean something to us. Christ okay. it is mm. that restores the relationship with Christ and removes the barrier. So mm. that's why we can sing, what a fellowship, what a joy mm. divine, leaning on the mm. everlasting arm. I have blessedness with my Lord so dear, leaning on the everlasting life. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting life, safe and secure from all alarm, leaning on the everlasting life. Trust in Christ. He is your high priest. And if you trust in him, your anchor is steady and sure. That's where we have to leave it. Thank you so much for studying with us on another edition of Walking in the Light. God's willing, we will be back next week, same time. Until then, may God bless you and may he keep you.